This is Green Bay Beach, which I don't come very often, um, but it's, it's also been affected by the storms last summer. Um, a lot of trees broken down, but it's still really pretty nice. This is Christmas Day, 2023 still. Well, this will be um, the video that I will be editing on New Year's Eve. <laughs> um, I actually um, have this black dinner set that I glazed. Just wanted to get it out before the weekend of New Year. Um, we're still busy as far as business in the gallery, so I just thought it'd be nice to show this. Uh, the last one turned out so nice, I went ahead and just did an entire dinner set for the gallery, glazed in black. So I feel pretty confident this will sell well. And I tried, tried a variation, basically. Um, so uh, if that, the last one was totally matte with a, a raw edge trim around the edge of the plates and the balls. This one, I've glazed some gloss black over parts of it as well, uh, which will be a slightly nicer surface, I think, to actually cut on with a knife. Um, whereas the matte black, I was, I was feeling like it wasn't too bad, but if it was a bit shinier, it would have been um, a little nicer for cutting on. So we'll see. But this is what it looks like. Let's show you this anyway. You can see it has a real shine, but at the edges on the rim, as it comes up the wall there on these pieces. These are like a sort of bowl plate. We like to eat out of these ourselves. Um, so you've got a shiny surface down where the food would be cut and then you have a matte black around the edges. Um, and then on the outside, it's matte black. Um, and then I have my oatmeal, instead of leaving a raw edge, I put oatmeal. So you can see you have a sort of a, it's not, the oatmeal is sort of a semi-matte as well. Um, but you have a nice oatmeal edge and I feel like this has a sort of a oh I don't know a sort of a Scandinavian Danish feel to it um, sort of very simple but yet quite elegant and I, there you go Denmark I just gave you a big compliment <laughs> all right so but anyway you know, it's a nice compliment com combination I think really so that's the first piece I'm sort of happy with it. Um, there are speckles in this clay. Uh, this is recycled clay um, where I threw everything into it. So you've got a bit of speckle, a bit of red clay and everything. Um, and I can see the speckles through the glaze too, which is kind of nice. It's sort of, you can just about see that there. They're sort of glinting. The plates, ah, this one, I brushed it on, um, and maybe I should have brushed it a little thicker on this piece, but you can see a few areas where it kind of dried out a little bit, um, but you have the same effect. Matte towards the edge, gloss towards the center, and with that oatmeal, and on the outside, of course, you just got the matte black with the oatmeal as well. But that has a nice effect there, I think. You, know, you can see how shiny that gloss black is, and that's just the licorice glaze out of Mastering Cone 6 glazes. This is another one of the bowls, and we like to think of these as dinner plates, but, um, but it's like a large flat bowl. The rim is about an inch to an inch and a half tall. I would say easily an inch and a half, but look how nice that black mat is versus the oatmeal. Nice. Um, they're kind of a, uh, I would say, um, teacup or mug, I guess you could say, but look at the oatmeal. Very nice. Oh, there's a little pink there too. Chrome tin pink getting in there somehow. I'm not sure how that came in, but it'll only take one fleck of chrome uh, or vapor of chrome in the kiln to make that tin in the actual oatmeal go a little pink. 
But see the shine? I wonder if my signature showed up. Well, not really. But you can barely see it. I sign on in black, obviously, but you can just see it. I'm not sure if you can catch that or not. It's just in there. So that's fluted on the coffee mug, coffee cup, with oatmeal, matte black, and licorice. Very nice. I like to experiment, and I also didn't just dip flat on these, I waved them in the glaze for the gloss, so you get a little life in that line. But the oatmeal fading on the inside is very nice. And I did think that a, a, a shiny surface, and this glaze has been tested in that book for food safety, so, uh, so I thought the licorice would be a better for the inside of the coffee cup there. And then the balls. These are licorice inside, matte black, licorice on the bottom half with oatmeal on the rim. And uh, the oatmeal slipped down the rim a little bit, so you've got a nice breaking of the edge there. And some fluting on the outside with a little extra marking with the actual trimming tool there. And then the bottom. So this is a different one. I had some spare bowls I glazed in the same. So this one doesn't have the fluting, but the same glaze combinations. Just so elegant. The small plates. Not much room to do the um, matte black on the outer edge, but there is matte black around the outer edge with the gloss in the center. So it gives it a nice look. But these are literally three quarters of an inch tall. The speckles really showing through the, can you can see them coming right up through the surface. It looks like pinholes, but it isn't. It's actually speckles and all that. So, um, and another dinner plate. So there's lots of rep repetition at this point because uh, it's the same pieces all the way down. So I'm simply going to go through this quietly and uh, you can just look at all the pieces and then we'll take some pictures.
Okay, I got it all unpacked. Um, I basically got a few spares, but there's a six of every form. Um, and uh, my only thoughts about it at the moment are, is it looks great, um, but actually banding the black gloss in the plates, I was trying to get that sort of uh, even coat going around the plates. Uh, so I was banding the mono banding wheel with the gloss licorice glaze over top of the matte glaze. And I thought it would actually go pretty consistently gloss over the entire piece, uh, but it didn't, even though it looked like it did. So I guess what's happening is the black matte glaze is lifting up with the brush uh, as you put the actual licorice down. And so the two glazes are mixing together um, just by friction um, and you get that variation, which, you know, in some ways I can see, you know, is a kind of an appeal to it more of a rustic look um, and um, so I, I'm not to, not unhappy with it but I'm feeling like it wasn't what I intended so what I can do uh, but I'm not sure I will yet is actually put another band of the licorice glaze uh, in the center of each plate because I know that the two glazes can't mix at this point and then just refiring the plates um, so that's possibly what I'm going to do because I have another glaze firing maybe two more going up this week before the end of the year so that's my thoughts. But the mugs, the bowls, they look great. I mean, just really nice. And that was just simply dipping, you see. Um, the only other thought, thing I thought about is just, you know, I could wax over the uh, black matte glaze um, before I actually put the licorice on. That's an extra step, um, waiting for the wax to dry. And I hate the smell of wax. And I always feel bad because I vent the kiln, but you can smell it outside my studio when you're doing that. And I'm right on the road, so I don't like to do that. Um, people walk along the road. I don't like, you know, forcing them to smell wax burning. <laughs> it smells like a medieval castle. But um, anyway, um, looks good. So uh, if anybody wants it, the recipes are in the beginning of the video. Um, you can actually try some stuff yourself and see what happens. And happy new year! It's uh, only three days to the end of the year. And we all made it through it. All right. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.